one of the most important events that kicks all this off is the American occupation of the yes. Dominican Republic starting Absolutely. in 1916 for about eight years at that point and U.S. troops murder mm-hmm. Adana's parents. And, but it's just the latest in a long line of suffering in the country when the Spaniards come and kill Absolutely. the Arawak and enslave Africans. And Absolutely. then whoever the Arawak maybe have come before that. And yeah, it's... it's it's these cycles, and it's not, you know, Mark Twain saying history rhymes, and but it rhymes because of the material oppression of empire. Um, and so interchangeably, you have the Spanish and the English and the French and the Portuguese empires, like so much of the activity of that sort of oppressive theft, um, whether it was imperialism or whether it moves towards sort of this sort of postmodern capitalism. Um, the the methods change, but the objectives of the wealthy and the objectives of the ruling class stay the same. And, you know, growing up in Chicago, first generation as Latinx, you are surrounded with other um, immigrants and, and people who had been refugees and exiles from very particular wars and very particular U.S. involvement in Latin America. So my dad worked as a jeweler. He's a jewelry caster in Jewelers Row in Chicago. And it's a predominantly, actually funny enough, it's a predominantly Jewish and Latino, <laughs> Latinx um, business. And so as a kid, I was always surrounded, whether it was in my neighborhood or at fan, you know, neighborhood parties or at my dad's work, I was always surrounded with sort of these la- this labyrinth of stories of exile, including people who had left San Salvador, in the late 80s, Guatemala in the 90s, most recently um, Honduras. And so when I taught sort of the previous administration's support of like overthrowing um, sort of a leftist government in Honduras and and, and, I, and teaching in Chicago too, I, I taught um, dropouts for a number of years in Chicago, there would be Honduran students, Honduran refugees in my classroom. And it was interesting looking back at the history of involvement in places like the Dominican Republic in the early 20th century and sort of the banana republic sort of methodology in which the so United States government went into, you know, we, essentially we own Latin America. We're going to do... The Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe yeah. Doctrine, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a dangerous, terrifying doctrine and it hasn't ended. Um, and I had, I would have, I had Honduran refugees um, in my classroom and I always thought to myself, like, this is not even close to being over. Current American involvement in Venezuela, you can trace our heavy-handed involvement in Chile and Buenos Aires and Ecuador. Ecuador had a military, or excuse me, the United States had a military base in Ecuador up until relatively recently. Um, so you, as a first-generation American, I'm living in the, <laughs> in this place, um, growing up in Chicago with fellow refugees um, and first-generation Americans from places like Iraq. Um, and India and Southeast Asia. And these were my friends and I skateboarded with them and we read science fiction books together. But you don't realize till you're much older that this was sort of the, um, your experience as a first generation American and your parents, even though they were coming from all over the world, were experiencing some of the same repercussions of, I think, American empire.